Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome to Phoenix Point Banker Build 3. Or technically an early press release that Snapshot Games was kind enough to give me access to. It's a little less polished and there are a few key differences, but we'll get into that in just a moment. For now, let's take a moment to talk about what's new in Banker Build 3. Now, first of all, this backer build gives us our first real look at a rudimentary version of the game's planned global strategy layer, the Geoscape. It also includes a much wider variety of new randomized maps to fight on, as well as a small assortment of new enemies to encounter, such as the fearsome Mindfragger larvae and the towering Sentinels. While certain things, such as the Phoenix Point classes and the massive Chiron, weren't quite ready for inclusion in this build, we do still get a small assortment of new abilities and equipment to play with. Anyway, if you've been following the official news updates, then you've probably already heard most of this. Let's just dive in and see how things work ourselves. Oh, but uh, first, today's video is dedicated to Mildly Nuclear and Wo 77 Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in the new Geoscape layer. It looks a little daunting, but it's actually pretty straightforward once you get used to it. Each time you start a new campaign, it randomly places your base somewhere on the Geoscape. Then it populates the rest of the world with NPC havens, scavenger sites, mist incursions, and even alien bases. It's obviously pretty far from being finished, but... It does include basic placeholder mechanics for things like traveling, exploration, and the game's planned diplomacy system, but we'll have to wait a little longer before we start seeing things like base building, research, or the character progression system. Still, it does give us a pretty good idea of where the developers are heading. In this case, it looks like we're starting in Northeast Asia which actually puts us in a fairly dense cluster of potential points of interest, though we can only actually reach three of them without having to burn extra fuel. We're also right on the outer edge of a mist incursion zone, marked by the red circle, which will make things more difficult in the long run. We should be fine for now, though, so let's take a look at our squad. Now this is one of the areas where the press release actually differs from the backer build. I actually get to start with an armadillo, whereas normally you'd have to spend 400 material to actually build one. Aside from that though, I'm starting with a pretty standard assortment of four new Jericho soldiers. One assault, one heavy, one sniper, and one technician. It's basically the same squad you had back in the uh, Fort Freiheit scenario. Only this time, they have randomized names, a modular inventory system, and a few extra special abilities to play with. One of the most prominent new additions is this equipment loadout screen, which lets you swap equipment around between missions. Of course, like everything else, it is important to remember that this is just an unfinished placeholder. At the very least, we should be seeing more customization options and more armor slots in the final release. Anyway, we don't really have much equipment to play with right now, so we'll have to go out and find some. Now, like I said, we will need to keep an eye on this mist, but it's not a problem at the moment. That means we can stay focused on exploring some of these points of interest. There are actually 12 points of interest within our current travel range, marked by the orange circle. Unfortunately, you'll notice that most of them are marked with dotted lines. That means they're too far away for us to make a full round trip. We can get to them, but then we can't actually get back. We'll want to focus on the closer positions first, the ones marked with solid circles. And we're in luck. We've already found a scavenging site. That means we're in for a fight, but we should also find some pretty nice loot to kit our squad out with. Okay, let's have a look around.
we're seeing a lot of new map assets here, mostly post-apocalyptic ruins. Very nice. And of course, uh, the vast majority of this terrain is destructible. We can also see a few control points, which will give us a large willpower boost if we can actually capture them. But we've got some more immediate concerns at the moment. Okay, let's see if we can take out that crab man and uh, secure that loot box. They're obviously still using the new Jericho supply crate as a placeholder, but I think they're planning to replace those with more appropriate containers in the future. Okay, let's do this. Hmm, pretty heavily armored. No chance of a one-hit kill. Let's go for a headshot. Very nice. Alright, let's get our heavy in the armadillo. He can scout the map while we finish this guy off. Actually, he can move up and finish this guy off. Oh, hold on. We've got another crab man. Looks like that guy's got a grenade launcher. He's pretty far away, though. Had a bit of an animation glitch there. No big deal. And Crabman down. Okay, let's move the rest of the squad up. Might as well take some pot shots. We're not going to do any serious damage, though. Wow, that's actually some pretty high potential damage. <laughs> and uh, that's about what I was expecting. Uh-oh. Wow, that is about the uh, worst case scenario. Okay, so our technician has now been taken over by a Mindfragger larva. Unfortunately, that means we're going to have to shoot it off, preferably without crippling or killing our technician. We'll use our weakest weapon for this. Hopefully, that'll do enough damage to kill the Mindfragger, but not enough to go right through it and shoot our technician in the face. <laughs> hey, that was just about perfect. Of course, our technician still loses some willpower, but we can fix that by heading for the nearest capture point. We'll also see if we can take out that second crab man before he gets close enough to use that grenade launcher on us. Oof, that's a pretty rough shot. Let's just head for that crate instead. No luck on the Overwatch, but he didn't attack us either. We should have plenty of time to kill him next turn. Oh, and we've got another Mindfragger. 
We'll try to kill that one before it eats someone's face. Okay, we should be able to take out the Crab Man easy. Let's start heading the Armadillo for that Mind Fragger. Oh, looks like another Crab Man spawned in. We'll have to keep an eye on those spawn zones. We don't want ourselves getting flanked. Close. One more shot should do it. <laughs> Unless we miss. Twice. Three times. You know what? Let's use the Sniper's Gunslinger ability, just to hedge our bets here. You have got to be kidding me. Alright, well, at least this will give our technician a chance to recover some will. Okay, well, I wanted to grab this crate, but, uh, let's finish off that crab man instead. Ooh, that's a fire cat. That's the Phoenix Project Grenade Launcher. We definitely want that. Right, right, we can't actually take it yet because we used our action point shooting that crab man. That's fine, we'll pick it up next turn. Okay, these guys are clustered up, so let's do this the easy way. Now, obviously you won't be able to do that in the normal version of Backerveld 3, not without spending 400 material to build your own armadillo. Still, you can't blame me for cheesing out a little. I love doing that. Anyway, let's grab that control point, and let's finish clearing the map. Oh, uh, you'll notice that several of my will points are now glowing purple. Those are points beyond the uh, normal limit that the character can have. You'll lose those extra points at the end of the battle, but in the meantime, you can use them to fuel powerful special abilities. Now let's clear that crate. I guess this is kind of pointless. You'll automatically capture all the crates if you clear out all the enemies first. Still, it's not a bad idea to pick up a few choice items, on the off chance that you're forced to retreat. Still no luck with the Overwatch, but we've got a pretty clear shot at him now. Solid hit. No crippled limbs, though. Really? Okay. Well, we've got an excess of will points, so 
let's go for Overwatch again. Rifle can barely get through their armor. You know what? Let's get that injury patched. Then he won't have any recovery time after the fight. And let's finish this. Or not. Huh. There must be some enemies hiding somewhere. There we go. Nice hit. Hmm. Let's see if the armadillo is close enough for this. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to be so sad when they take the armadillo away from me. Okay, let's see here. Looks like we got a couple of missiles, some extra medkit charges, a couple of sniper rifles, two stun rods, that's a nice find, and a couple of extra grenades. Not bad. All right, let's get this stuff equipped. First up, let's get that fire cat on our heavy. I think a grenade launcher will be a lot more useful than that machine gun. If we can find it, that is. Oh, I better assault still has it. Yeah, there it is. There are some faulty icons in the current press build, but hopefully they'll have that fixed in the actual backer build. Looking good. Obviously, the weapon's a little out of alignment, but I'm sure they'll fix that. Remember, this is a pre-alpha. I guess we should give him a backup weapon, too. You can't use grenades for everything. I mean, you can, but you probably shouldn't. Sadly, we didn't get any of the other new weapons. I was really hoping we'd get a shotgun or one of those new heavy pistols. We did get a couple of stun rods, though, so let's give one of those to our assault. Thank you. 
There we go. I mean, the animation still messed up, but otherwise, that's looking pretty nice. Now let's give our technician a backup weapon. All right, let's go looking for trouble. Hmm. Camp Esquire. Independent Haven. Treat everyone the way you'd like to be treated. Well, considering it looks like they hate us, uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Okay, let's try that again. What we really need here is a friendly haven. Hmm. Nineveh. Disciples of Anu. Dream of the Stars. Well, they like us. Not by much, but certainly more than Camp Esquire does. Basically, once a haven likes you enough, they'll let you build refueling facilities or radar stations there, both of which are pretty vital when it comes to exploring the geoscape. In this case, the Disciples don't actually like us enough to let us build a radar station, but that's fine. We just need a refueling station for now. Alright, that further expands our travel range. Now we can actually reach this next batch of POIs. There's a new Jericho Haven. They like us too, so that's another option for a refueling station. And another Disciples Haven. These guys don't actually like us, though. Okay, one more try. Ah, yet another Disciples Haven. But at least these guys are friendlier than the other ones. All right, well, that doesn't leave us with a lot of options here. In the full game, there will be special events and other things that will help you explore, but here, our only real options are to either build another refueling station, or to just pass some time and wait for a defense mission to pop up. We're pretty low on resources, so let's go with the latter option. Hmm, no luck so far. Um, okay, let's try a little longer, but I am running out of time here. If we don't find something soon, then I'll build another refueling station and we'll go looking for another scavenging site. I would like to at least try out that grenade launcher before we wrap things up. Okay, let's go look for a salvage site. This will put us pretty low on supplies, but that's fine. I'll be starting over once I get the new backer build anyway. There we go. Alright, I've got about 20 minutes left on the clock, so let's do this. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here. Well, right off the bat, we've got a crab man. And he's got a grenade launcher. We've also got a mist sentinel. They're basically a living security system for alien bases. 
There are three different types, but uh, in this case, it spews out a cloud of microbial mist when it's disturbed. Alright, the Sentinel's stationary, so let's focus on that crab man first. Nice, took out his leg. Not sure if we'll be able to hit him with anyone else, but we'll certainly give it a shot. You know what, I'm itching to try out this new grenade launcher, so let's start with that. Yeah, no way it's going to reach that crab man, but let's soften up that sentinel. Hmm. Less than I was expecting, but it is automatic damage. Okay, let's finish that thing off before it vomits mist all over the battlefield. Mist, uh, saps your soldier's willpower, it blocks your line of sight, and in the full game, it'll have a chance of infecting your soldiers. Best to avoid it whenever possible. Let's try to finish this guy off, and uh, then we'll start heading for a capture point. That extra willpower really makes a difference. Nice, that'll do it. Oh, looks like we've got two more enemies spawning in. Looks like it's two more grenade launchers, too. Yuck. Alright, well, there's a lot of distance between us and them, so let's start slowly advancing across the battlefield. We'll try to take them out before they can use those grenades. Oh, and uh, we'll go for that capture point, too. Like I said, that willpower does make a difference. Hmm. Those guys aren't moving at all. They might be stuck. Or maybe they just haven't noticed us yet. Regardless, it gives us time to grab this capture point. And we are supercharged. Also immune to falling damage. Okay, we'll scout ahead with the armadillo. That thing's pretty resistant. There's one. Let's give these guys a wide berth. There's two. Oh, and uh, there's three. Looks like we've got a mind fragger in play. We've also got some crates. Not my biggest concern right now. Okay, let's get a little closer. Thank you. 
Oh, where is that? Behind us? Yeah, that guy's behind us. And those guys are on the move now. Guess they just didn't notice us before. <laughs> guess he had to really think about that move. I guess I can understand why. It was a really bad one. There's that mind fragger. He's doing his best to flank us. All right, Raiders, let's clear the field. Nice, that guy's basically dead next turn. Now let's see what we can do about that mind fragger. Yeah, that's a pretty small target, but you know what? That's fine. We've got a grenade launcher. Man, that thing is so much better than the machine gun. Alright, we've got one more guy behind us, but uh, we'll just form up and wait for him to come to us. Oh, wait, that's a completely different direction. We appear to be flanked. And that guy did not bleed to death like he was supposed to. And yet another crab man. I actually forgot about that guy. Oh, uh-oh. We're seeing a severe performance drop all of a sudden. It should be fine as soon as we lock in an order. <laughs> Man, it is really struggling at the moment. Just a reminder, this is a pre-alpha. <laughs> there we go, and we're back in business. Come on, man. I will say, the uh, armadillo kind of trivializes the challenge right now, but that's probably why they changed it for Backer Build 3. 
Nice. That's another one down. Assuming he bleeds the way he's supposed to. Hmm. I think I lost track of our positioning here. That's fine. running out of time here, so let's run that guy down and uh, call it a day. Hmm. It looks like the armadillo got stuck, but, uh, ah, there we go. No, looks like we've got one more. But where is he? Ah, there's our first shotgun. Too late to actually use it, but uh, still, nice to find one. Those things are incredibly powerful, but they also have an incredibly limited ammo capacity. It actually becomes a pretty significant problem in the uh, current backer build. We're actually pretty close to max encumbrance, so we'll leave it here for now. One more mind fragger. He must have come from that uh, spawn zone behind the truck. All right, let's finish this. Okay, let's try to take out that cover without running over the crate. Whoops, guess I was a little off. That's fine, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. Too far for the launcher. Let's try the rifle instead. Nice. got another crab man. I knew there was a guy in there.
Okay, now let's wrap this up. I wonder if that would actually hit. Well, only one way to find out. Well, it hit, just not very hard. I will never get tired of that. Okay, this has to be the last guy. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't start this again. All right, let's just go bananas with the pistol. Or we'll kill him in one shot. That works too. Phoenix Point is a fickle beast. Okay, looks like that got us a bunch of ammo and uh, a couple of turrets. I don't see the shotgun on the list, but we know we got one of those, too. Anyway, I really am out of time, so we really do need to wrap things up. I am sorry we didn't get to use the Phoenix shotgun or the heavy pistol, but they work pretty much the way you'd expect them to. I'd also like to do some defense missions and take out some alien bases, but that'll have to wait till next time, once I've got the actual release version of Backer Build 3. Though I will miss having the armadillo. Anyway, let's wrap things up here for now, and uh, I should be back tomorrow with an October news roundup. Then I'll spend some time with the actual Backer Build. But for now, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. Thanks for watching. Oh, and remember, although I do love talking about Phoenix Point, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official YouTube channel, the official Discord channel, the official Twitter account, the official Facebook, or the original crowdfunding campaign over on Fig. You can also get access to Backer Build 3 for yourself by pre-ordering the game in the official Snapshot Games web store. As always, links are in the description.